Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. You are learning with Dr. Shobha Nikam. In this video, I will talk about 4-bit asynchronous down counter. So, counter is a circuit which counts number of clock pulses. Here, down counter means it counts in downward direction. It means it counts from the highest value till the lowest value or 0. Then, this is 4-bit counter. It means maximum it can count up to 1, 1, 1, 1. The maximum 4-bit number is 15. And it will count from 15 to 0, 0, 0. This is a synchronous counter scene. We have 4 bits. One flip-flop can store 1 bit of data. And that is why it is called also called as 1-bit memory cell. So, here we have 4 bits. So, we need to take 4 flip-flops. So, in a synchronous counter... The external clock is given to only one flip-flop. The flip-flop which generates least significant bit. Output of that flip-flop is connected to clock input of second flip-flop. Output of second flip-flop acts as clock to third flip-flop. So, and in case of synchronous counter, single external clock is given to all flip-flops. The a separate video for 4-bit synchronous down counter is also prepared. The link is given in the description box. Also for synchronous up, synchronous, uh, asynchronous up counters, their links are given in the description box. Here, we will design our counter using JK flip-flop as well as using T flip-flop. When we design our counter synchronous counter we can use any flip-flop we can design using d flip-flop t flip-flop jk sr any flip-flop whereas in case of asynchronous counters we use either jk flip-flop or t flip-flop and the reason is it works on the principle of toggling all inputs are connected to logic one and that is why, see, J, in case of JK flip-flop, J input and K input are connected to logic 1. In case of T flip-flop, input T is connected to logic 1. And whenever input is connected to logic 1, the next state output is complement of present state output. And our asynchronous counters works on the principle of toggling. And that is why we use JK and T flip-flops. So, here I will show you using both JK as well as T flip-flops. So, first... Let's see using JK flip-flops. So, I'll draw four JK flip-flops. These are four JK flip-flops. Here, this is our least significant bit. This flip-flop will generate LSD. And this flip-flop will generate most significant bit. So, here, in case of asynchronous counter, external clock is connected to the flip-flop which generates least significant bit. So, we can write it as Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Here Q0 is LSB. Then this is down counter. So, in case of down counter, inverted output of first flip-flop acts as clock input to second. So, here Q0 bar acts as clock to second flip-flop. Q1 bar acts as clock to second flip-flop. Here Q2 bar acts as clock input to next flip-flop. And inputs of all flip-flops J and K inputs are connected to logic 1 or VCC. So all inputs are connected to logic 1 or VCC. External clock is connected to only one flip-flop and output of inverted output of first flip-flop is connected to clock input of next flip-flop. This is down counter. In case of up counter, what happens? Instead of Q0 bar, we connect Q0 to clock input of next flip-flop. Here we connect Q1 to clock input of next flip-flop. So here, truth table of this 4-bit asynchronous counter is, it starts from 1, 1, 1. And it goes up to 0, 0, 0. So, 15, then 14, then 13, then 12, 
in this way it will count up to 0 0 0 0 because this is down counter and once it will reach to 0 0 0 it will again go back to 1 1 1 so it starts from 15 and it ends at 0 and it will keep on repeating now let's draw the same diagram using t flip flop first and then we will see the timing diagram so these are four t flip flops here t0 this is my least significant beat and this is my most significant beat so external clock is connected to the flip flop which generates least significant beat then next is inverted output of first flip flop at such clock input to second so i'll connect q0 bar to clock same as our jk flip flop they are same only difference is here the inputs are two j and k and here we have only one input and that is t input and same as jk flip flop will connect t inputs to logic one or vcc t0 t1 t2 and t3 will connect all of them to vcc or logic one or you can show in this way also the separate inputs are connected to vcc or logic one so this is four bit asynchronous down counter this is asynchronous because single clock does not drive all flip flops simultaneously and then this is four bit and that is why we have taken four flip flops this is down counter so it start counting from maximum number and it goes up to zero 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 in exam you need to write this entire table after 12 you need to write 11 10 9 8 7 and 6 every value you must write here now let's see the timing diagram here you can see the clock connected is negative age trigger this arrow indicates age and bubble indicates negative age so our output will change at every negative age of the clock and negative age means transition from 1 to 0 or this is also called as falling age then we have four outputs we'll check our outputs at q0 q1 q2 and q3 q0 bar q1 bar q2 bar and q3 bar are needed because they are acting as input to next flip flop so that we must know their value initially we will assume that all the outputs are zero initially before the first negative age comes so i'll show here my q0 is zero my q1 is also zero q2 is also zero and q3 is also zero if they are zero it means q0 bar is one q1 bar is one q2 bar is one and q3 bar is also one now let's start with q0 all uh, for all the flip-flops the uh, output will change at negative age and because in case of jk flip-flop in jk both inputs are connected to logic one and in case of t input is connected to vcc so truth table of jk flip-flop is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 here the next state qn plus one state is same as present state for 0 1 0 for 1 0 it is 1 and for 1 1 the next state is complement of present state it means here as inputs are connected to 1 1 we need to check this condition only it means always next state output is complement of present state output that's it similarly for t flip flop also if t input is 0 the next state is same as present state and if it is 1 the next state is complement of present state and here t inputs are connected to 1 so we will check this condition only see my t0 is 1 so and clock is coming so next state is complement of present state so my next state will become 1 again here my t input is continuously connected to 1 so it will toggle the output at next 
negative age again at next negative age it will toggle toggle means it will invert in this way output will keep on changing if here q0 is 0 so q0 bar was 1 now q0 is 1 so q0 bar will become 0 so this will also toggle because q0 is toggling but in opposite way this q0 bar this q0 bar will act as clock input to t1 so i'll show this q0 bar as a clock and this is our negative age trigger so 1 to 0 transition is here so this will act as my clock now so output will change at these places so q1 was 0 initially q1 was 0 we have assumed that q0 q1 q2 and q3 all are 0 so it will become 1 because t input is connected to logic 1 so it will toggle the output so output will become 1 how long it will remain 1 up to next negative age so the next negative age here now this is not our clock our clock is q0 bar so it will remain 1 up to this point at this point again it will toggle because new clock age will come and it will toggle so here it will become 0 up to next age and so on similarly it was 1 so this will become 0 now and it is exactly inverted version of q1 now this q1 bar will act as clock to next flip flop so i'll mark negative ages here also so initially this is 0 so this will become 1 up to next negative age and here again it will become 0 will remain 0 up to next negative age then 1 q2 bar is complement so 1 to 0 then it will become 1 it will become 0 it become 1 and so on now q2 bar will act as clock input to next flip flop so i'll mark negative ages here and here so q3 is initially 0 it will become 1 here and it will remain 1 up to next negative age of its clock. Clock to Q3 is Q2 bar. 1 and here it will become 0 and will remain 0 up to next negative age. And Q3 bar, Q3 bar is really not required because we don't have any fourth flip flop. We will write it. It is exactly opposite to Q3 our outputs are q0 q1 q2 and q3 so i'll write their values see i have written values for q0 q1 q2 q3 here q0 is our lsb and q3 is our msb so we'll write 1 1 1 1 so here it is 1 1 1 1 the next is 1 1 1 0 we always write least significant bit at right hand side so triple 1 0 then 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 then 1 1 0 0 then 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 so see it starts counting from 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 so on this is 2 and after this 2 there will be 1 and then 0 i can write decimal equivalence here 15 then 14 then 13 then 12 and 11 and then 10 and 9 8 7 6 and so on this is timing diagram for 4 bit asynchronous down counter thank you so much for watching do share it share this video with your friends uh, i'm sure it will be helpful to you in your exams so subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notification about my newly uploaded videos. Thank you so much for watching.